Welcome back friends. In today's video, I want to show you the steps that I use to import my favorite logos into Fusion and then turn those into CAD parts that I can make my own custom parts with. For anyone that doesn't know me, my name is Ty Ridings and I work as an aerospace engineer for my day job. But in my spare time, I like to make these videos kind of documenting how I use Fusion to come up with my own projects, hoping that that helps others with their own projects as well. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and jump into today's topic. Okay. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is pick the logo that you want to use and find an SVG file that you can bring into your design for that logo. I am trying to keep it simple. I wanna use this cool NASA logo. So whatever logo you're looking for, Google up if there's an SVG that already exists for it and then download that file type. Now, if you don't have access to the file that you want, you can just Google the NASA worm logo, go to images. We'll just pick this one. I'll save this image as a worm PNG. And then I will go to a handy website called PNG to SVG.com. I've used this a lot in the past. It's super quick and easy way to generate your SVG files. I will pick the NASA worm PNG that I had earlier, and it gives you a color palette with many colors that it kind of tries to identify within the palette of the image. I'm gonna keep this simple with just red and white. Honestly, maybe even just red. That's perfect because I don't care about the colors for this. It's been generated. Now I'm gonna download this SVG file. Now I'm set to go back to Fusion and get to work on my part. So step two, we've got our SVG files. What we're gonna do is go ahead and bring those files into our workspace. But before we do that, I actually want to add kind of a little border to this because I want to turn this into like a little desktop sign or something. So I'm going to start a sketch. I'm going to make myself a center rectangle. Yeah. And I'm using this for two reasons. One, the SVG doesn't come in very parametric friendly. You just sort of scale it to the size that you want it to be. So it helps to have something else in your plane, whether that's just a construction line rectangle or just some features that will help bound the actual size of the part and location of it. Or for me, like I said, I want to turn this into a sign. So I will be able to bound that part with physical physical features that I actually want to keep once I pull that in as well. So I'm going to define this, we'll say 180. 80 by 85. We can adjust this later once we bring it in, but I think the 180 is really the one I care about since I do want to 3D print this and it'll still fit on my 3D printer bed if I scale it that way. So to get the file that I want, I'm going to come up here to insert, insert SVG, insert from my computer, and I'm going to select that goofy SVG file name that came from the PNG to SVG converter website, hit open. And here we go, we've got it in here. It's uh, It comes in as a shadow of kind of the final part that you'll get, but I'm gonna use this block and sort of drag it up over by this corner. And then I'll use this little quarter circle shape right here to scale it out to about the size that I want it to be. And honestly, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit okay. And now I have active sketch features that I can use for my part. This is also helpful now that it's pulled in because I can adjust the size of my border accordingly. Uh, let's try 60. That's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna hit finish sketch. And from here, you can turn this into your sign. And so what I'm gonna do is hit E for extrude. And I'm actually gonna start with the NASA letters first. So I'm gonna choose those ones and I'm gonna go ahead and hit 10 millimeters extrude those up. And now you can see if I drag around, I've got those extruded up, which is great, but I also want to include my border. So I'm actually gonna click back on my sketch, double click and then hit E and I'm going to select the background as well. And I'm gonna extrude that to about five millimeters. Sweet. So. Now I've got my part that I can work with to do some fancy coloring now as well. Because these were all three segmented into three bodies originally, I can kind of exploit that for doing my coloring here in a second and then also importing it into bamboo, which is kind of cool. So speaking of ways to practice sharpening your creative thinking skills, I wanted to thank today's sponsor, which is brilliant. When it comes to becoming a better problem solver, it has a lot to do with using the right tools for the 
the job. That's where Brilliant has helped me a ton. Its interactive lessons help break down difficult topics like math, science, programming, data analysis, and AI. Brilliant isn't just another learning app, it actually gets you hands-on with the concepts. Instead of just watching lectures, you're solving problems and playing with ideas, which research shows is way more effective. The lessons build from the ground up with fun challenges, little competitive features, and daily nudges to keep you on track. Plus, everything is designed by top experts from places like Stanford, MIT, Caltech, and Google, so you know you're learning from the best. And if you're curious about data, Brilliant's courses are the perfect place to dive in. You'll start with the basics like visualizing data and quickly build up to algorithms and regression. Plus, you'll work with real data sets from companies like Airbnb, Spotify, Starbucks, and many more. So you're actually learning how to spot trends and make smarter decisions in the real world. To learn for free on Brilliant, go to brilliant.org slash tiewritings, scan the QR code on screen, or click on the link that I have down below in the description. Brilliant's also generously given a 20% discount to anyone that clicks on one of my custom links for their annual premium subscription, which gives you unlimited daily access to everything on Brilliant. To do the changes to color here in my CAD, First thing I wanna do is actually save this as it is. Now I'm ready to start changing the appearances. We'll come up here to the modify tab, click on appearance, and I'm gonna search for a black material first. And I have this cool plastic matte black. I think that'll be nice for the background to kind of simulate the 3D printed material I'll be using. So I don't have it downloaded. I'm gonna click download and then I'm gonna drag it over here onto the bottom body and release it. And now that's all black, which is great. Then I'm gonna search up red. We've got a plastic matte red already downloaded right here that I like. So I'm gonna take it, drop it on that one, drop it on this one and drop it on this one. I'm gonna hit close and there we go. So we have got our very cool NASA logo added to a part. You know, there's some other small things I could do, like throw on some fillets around the edges of this bottom part. This is my beautification step while I'm kind of prepping it for 3D printing. We'll give it like a four. That's great. Now, once again, like I was saying, these are all still multiple bodies and that might kind of drive you crazy, which is okay. But here is kind of another fork in the road for anybody that's into 3D printing. You can use this to exploit a really cool feature, which is multicolor printing. So if I want to keep all of this as is, I could just go to file, export, and save this as a 3MF file in my downloads, then do something kind of cool. I'm gonna open my slicer, create a new project, and and when I pull that part in, it actually pulls in all of the different bodies and makes it so that it's ready to start printing it in two different colors if I want to do that. I did make a video recently talking about the benefits of like 3MFs versus SDLs and stuff like that, but this is that in action. It actually keeps the color settings and the multiple bodies and gives me the option right away to be able to print this in more than one color if I want to. If that is not something you want and and you want to go ahead and put all group all these bodies together you totally can and the way you do that is come down here in your browser and you'll use the combine tool to combine all of these into one so to do that we'll hit combine you're going to select a target body for me it doesn't really matter i'll just choose the end in this situation for tool bodies these are all the other bodies that i'll use to perform the combine function i'm going to select the other three for the operation i'm going to select join and then i'm going to go ahead and hit okay and now we've got one solid part which is this logo and you'll probably notice right away like hey you know my colors went away that were really handy to look at and it's okay you can go back to your modify appearance you can actually change where you place your appearance right now it says bodies slash components you can choose faces and you can select these faces to get the coloring it requires a little more effort on your end but you can still get back to the same place that you were in in the beginning and if you're curious for this file you can still export as a 3mf and we'll call this nasa new worm if i come back in here to my slicer again and create a new project again i actually lose that information because it's a single body now so that's something to note if you're wanting to exploit 3mf files for your ability to import multiple colors from your parent cad which for us is fusion you have to do it the other way that I showed you where you leave them as multiple bodies that are all colored independently and bring them in together and then join them at this 
stage to easily exploit the coloring. I appreciate everybody watching. Hopefully you got a little bit of value out of that. If you got lost in any point in the video, please just raise a comment, you know, asking for some clarification. I'm also gonna put some links to helpful resources down in the description below, specifically where I got these NASA logos and how to get to the SVG converter website that I use. Again, there's many out there, but it's just one that's worked for me in the past. Thanks everyone for watching. If you're interested in some more cat related content, check out these videos that I'm floating up on the screen right now. I'll just catch you next time. Thanks everyone. Bye.